All right, good evening. Today is Tuesday, November 5th at 6.30 p.m. This is the only Tangy Local Schools Board of Education. It calls a meeting to order. Ms. Hatfield, please call the roll. Um, Mr. Bartz is absent. Mrs. Fee, let's go. Here. <laughs> Mr. King, I apologize. Yes, here. Mrs. Patrick. Here. And Mr. O'Brien. Here. Thank you. Please stand and join me in the presentation. <laughs> To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, I'll uh, entertain a motion to approve the agenda as written, please. So moved. A second. All right, any discussion on the agenda? All right, seeing none. Ms. Hatfield, please call the roll. Mrs. Fiesel. Yes. Mr. King. Yes. Mrs. Patrick. Yes. And Mr. O'Brien. Yes. Thank you. Uh, all right, we're right into the board president's report. I just have two quick items. So um, as we've talked about today is election day, please get out and vote. No matter what you vote, at least get out and vote, do the task. Um, and I, I guess I would want to be the first one to just congratulate Ms. Patrick. <laughs> and uh, our newest member, <laughs> Mac. Lakeisha um, Wise. Lakeisha Wise. And yourself. And my, well, and it's not over yet, so I'm going to jinx myself. I'll jinx if you guys. voted, you're yeah. good. I voted. <laughs> okay. I did vote. Thank you. Did you um, vote for yourself? Thank you. Okay. Okay. Vote I, I voted for him. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, with that theme of voting, so tonight we are voting on a levy ask. Um, so, with that, um, I do want to. Acknowledge the great work today of the facilities committee, the administration, the finance and audit committee to get us to this point of um, coalescing around a number and an ask and moving forward in the process. Um, it is very rewarding to work with reasonable people that can disagree but then ultimately uh, rally behind uh, the effort and get the job done. So with that, I look forward to the discussion tonight and the vote. So with that, I will move to the Superintendent's report. Yes, for the first time, I don't have much to say since we just met and wanted to keep our discussion focused on that probably most important uh, thing we talk about, which is our future levy scenario. So, pass. Really? Because I'd like to compliment you on your presentation today at the Home Road Extension Ceremony. Mr. Rafe gave you a very nice speech. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate that. Oh, I didn't realize how long that project was in the works. The Kerbler property's been, Julie, you, the Kerbler property the was Kerbler going to be. The Kerbler probably was going to be the cobblestone development. It was, it was going to be yes. homes. Probably and a thousand homes. Yeah, we were planning on putting an elementary school there, actually. Um, and then the recession hit and that fell through. I think what's there now, it's great. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the future road will be <laughs> Absolutely. A, a huge benefit. And bridge over to Shanahan. Yeah. So. yeah. yeah. All right, well, that's terrific. Uh, Ms. Hatfield, do you have a report? Uh, yes, please. I'm sorry, I do have a couple of items that will take just a moment, though. Um, I just want to make sure that we are giving a recognition for the donations that we have on the agenda. Um, we have donations to um, Heritage Elementary PTO, or from the PTO to Heritage Elementary School, excuse me, for a playground gaga pit. Um, we have donations from Liberty Tree Elementary School PTO to Liberty Tree for a rockscape playground climber. For Wyandotte Run Elementary School from Erin Kerrison. Forgive me if I did not pronounce your name correctly. Um, but we have benches for the secret garden area donated. And then also to Liberty High School from the Liberty High School Service Club Serenity Garden donation. Um, the ONTNG Athletic Boosters and ONTNG High School Athletics to ONTNG High School uh, Weight Room Replacement Flooring. ONTNG Orange Athletic Boosters to ONTNG Local Schools. We have a donation for Boys Basketball Coach Supplemental. And from ONTNG Liberty Athletic Boosters to ONTNG Local, um, additional dollars for Girls Basketball and to Boys Basketball Coach Supplementals. Um, so as always, we appreciate those donations and all of the donations that our community makes 
with in-kind donations and or their time. Um, with that, we will be covering some of the other items on the agenda as we walk through our discussion. So I'll take any questions you may have on the action items. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have um, any public participation? No, we do not. All right. Let's roll right into the discussion items. So Dr. Jack Fetty, the first reading of the board policy updates. Good evening. I'm presenting the first reading of the board policy updates. The uh, board's policy committee met on October 11th to uh, review all of these policies and make the recommendations that are before you. Do you have any questions? Good. I do. Yes. Um, on the graduation requirements, mm -hmm. specifically the the physical education waiver, it now includes show choir. Um, but I just wanted clarification because I thought that it only impacted students like sophomores and below. Like they weren't going to like the state regulation wasn't going to accept it for juniors and seniors. But do you know if that's I the case? I don't believe that there was any. There's I don't think that they restricted it in that way. Okay. I think most juniors and seniors have already have fulfilled already got the requirement. It. Yeah. I and this is you. this is a district requested policy anyway because the state law changed, but Neola hasn't put out a new template yet, and it just didn't feel right to keep the old requirements in policy. So we made our own draft for the time being, and we'll probably see a a Neola template coming out here at the next spring update. Okay. But yes, the the show choir is now, now going to be in policy. Yeah. Any other questions? No. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. The next discussion item is the future levy scenarios. Mr. Ray from Ms. Hatfield. Absolutely. So we have um, presented you with a packet of materials for this evening's conversation. That packet is a culmination of a lot of information that we have shared. Um, either in presentations or in requested materials over the last couple of months. Um, so you have that before you. It discusses um, the millage models that we have presented for 5.9 mils through um, and including 9.5 mils for operating. Um, it discusses the bond package at a no new tax millage. And then it also discusses or what walks you through the capital needs and resources that we have and recommendation for further PI um, millage rates. Um, so with that, I think um, we just wanted to make sure that you had that before you again and we'll take questions as we walk through the discussion on what we would like to bring forward to the community for an operating millage um, total and a permanent improvement millage total. We also want to finalize the bond, obviously the bond package, so <clears throat> the things we've discussed um, obviously yes. include a uh, new elementary to open in 2021, new middle school, and a second elementary to open in 2023, school year fall 23, uh, securing enhancements to all the, all the buildings that, the remaining buildings that don't, or uh, don't currently have secure entrances, uh, various high school improvements, middle school improvements, um, enhancements to all of our elementary school playgrounds to make them ADA compliant and, and safer with soft surface playgrounds, um, some transportation enhancements, and then uh, uh, general needs in the area of um, additional parking at Hyatt's athletic fields and uh, mechanical uh, and roofing needs throughout the district and then the administrative office facility um, <clears throat> the initial bond package list that we had uh, presented early early in this process included 4.5 million for the administrative office facility um, <clears throat> as you know with our contract for the facility we have required to get two bids one independent of our uh, one from us and one from the owner and then we have to agree on a uh, agreed upon price or negotiate an agreed upon price with that bid. Uh, given the state of um, the economy and valuation throughout the district that continues to increase, um, the number we had originally planned was 4.5 million, but we think it's more prudent to include in the bond package 
uh, a total of five million because it, because there's there is a likely a strong likelihood that the bid could come in higher than what. But of course, one will, will only sell bonds for what. This is a maximum list, um, like for the elementary schools. It includes some contingencies that we talked about to cover the, the cost of construction. Certainly, is we're able to predict it pretty closely. Obviously, closely when we're talking about bidding in 2020. But the further out we go with a new middle school and a new elementary school, there's some concerns about future costs. So, um, so that's so. But again, for this building, <clears throat> so even though we've assumed say five million dollars for the bond package. We'll know the number before the bonds are issued. Correct. It'll be trued up. Correct. Based upon that. Correct. And I misspoke when I gave the description of the difference at our previous presentation, so I apologize for that. And when will we know that? Like, what's the date? Like, I think for an appraisal? We, know it sure we, we started right? the process. We, yeah, yeah, we have started. We actually had the yes. first appraisal was um, conducted. It's not completed. And then the owner's going back and through and doing theirs. So they um, get to do one too. Correct. Yes. yes. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So just so we're 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 that's clear. what's happened before. That that the number that's in this bond package does uh, does not include any money for any type of renovations or improvements to this off to this facility. Um, you know, in the in the future, once we own the facility, we will maintain it like we do all of our facilities. But this bond pa this package, this no new millage bond package, does not include any money dedicated towards renovations so do we have any questions on the bond package just to to reiterate what the total bond package is that we're going out for one i'm looking mm -hmm. at it right now. it's like 130 million 34 137 okay. yes and for for um the resolution purposes, it is rounded to 134.7, so 134,700,000. If we would have to sell that entire amount, you're not going to be able to sell 632,000 and change in bonds, right? So you have to have a rounded even number oh. to take it to market. That's why the bond resolution has a different dollar amount listed. So it cannot exceed but be less. Correct. It can totally be less, but it cannot exceed that amount. And again, it's no additional millage, so the t current taxes paid by our taxpayers are not impacted with the bond portion. Correct. Okay. So I think we're we're good with the capital. Yes. Okay. Yes. Going to move on to the operating ask. You want to start, uh, maybe? I would just go maybe, if you not to disagree, but maybe PI would might be easier. Because it's kind of how we pro progress through this, okay. through this. First, let's take the. Yeah. All right, I'll take it on first. There you go. So obviously, you, um, <clears throat> you know, Mr. Gordon, I think thank you for doing uh, a great job analyzing our, our capital needs for the the near term and and the long term. Because uh, Jeff has looked at it over a span of 20 years. Um, <clears throat> initially, you know, when you looked at the initial list of where we were with all of our capital needs. And Emily, I think, you know, did a great job of putting together a spreadsheet of what that looks like and how it budgets out over the, over the course of time. Um, knowing the constraints of where we are with operating dollars and the need for operating dollars, um, we've discussed the possibility, you know, we, we, we think long-term additional millage in permanent improvements is certainly warranted. Mm -hmm. um, obviously in 2016, we, for the first time, passed one mill of permanent improvement uh, millage, dedicated permanent improvement millage. And as I try to explain to the community, it's really important that we have that set aside millage so that a future board can't come in and decide to not maintain buildings. There is dedicated funds to maintain those buildings. Um, we looked at that overall need in the, in the short term of the next five or so years, because as we know in Old TNG, the next levy isn't an if, it's a when. Um, unfortunately because of state funding uh, we think we can manage those near-term capital needs with um, a half mil of permanent improvement additional permanent improvement dollars uh, we've moved some of the bigger uh, items into the bond package so additional buses 
uh, roofing, which you know has a, a 25 to 30 year lifespan, mechanicals like uh, chillers that have 25 year lifespans into the bond package, um, so that we move those. Those were initially in Mr. Gordon's uh, capital needs uh, and resources uh, presentation that kind of spoke to that need for an additional mill. I think we can incrementally go at that permanent improvement um, need moving forward. So uh, our recommendation would be that we move forward with a, uh, another half mil of dedicated permanent improvement money, which would raise roughly 2.1 additional, 2.1 million additional dollars. I don't have any question on the recommendation to go forward with a PI request of a half a million. I just want to point out that the one mill that we uh, approved four years ago, almost four years ago, um, mm -hmm. it's now been rolled back to 0 0.91. You know, so it's already... Well, the same thing said another yeah. way. The half a mill we're asking for today is almost like three quarters of a mill four years ago. Yeah. Because of the dollar the amount dollar that it mill. raises. Let's oh, yeah. go back to the dollar mm -hmm. mill. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. So it was estimated that that one mill would raise $3.2 million. It's raising roughly 3.6 um, because of the valuation growth. And so we're also looking at that knowing that we are roughly around $4.2 million um, collections on a mill. So it just shows the progression and the continued valuation growth in our community um, as we continue to move forward and, and age through that cycle. You know, I think it, you know, one one mil additional PI is, uh, there's enough work to be, to, to take care of all that. But I think it's more prudent, more fiscally responsible to attack it incrementally, get it as, as more, again, as um, more closely to where we need it. And then additionally, as, as the district moves forward, five years out or four years out or so, the value of of the district will have increased mm -hmm. so an additional half mil will generate even more in the future to address it you know as, mm -hmm. as the needs continue to grow but you know districts like us Westerville Dublin you know they're they're collecting three mils of PI because they're 20 years older than us so it's safe to say we will be asking for at least another half mil the next time around at some point, I would, I would, you know, again, not. I, I, it's, it's certainly difficult to predict tomorrow. Sometimes around here, five years from now, the additional PI needs is, are certainly in the future of the district. That's right. That's what it's saying. Right, and we'll continue to monitor that and reassess the val the value of that and the needs of that as we move forward. Okay, okay. we're good on the. Yeah. So. Actually, I'm probably uh, remiss. Roger, uh, in his absence, to provide a brief statement. He wanted read into the record. Um, so let me read that now before I get to my. So the email uh, is addressed to uh, Mr. Ryan, members of the Olentini Board of Education, Mr. Rafe, Ms. Hatfield, those in attendance. I apologize for not being able to attend tonight's meeting of the Board of Education due to my work travel schedule. And I'll interject in, in Roger's defense. He actually moved a meeting to today from yesterday. And then when my meetings get moved to today, he was a team player and uh, we were able to keep it on the 5th and um, get the meeting done, frankly, based upon the change in my schedule. But in any event, uh, it is difficult. Uh, it is a difficult balance at times. And I want you to know, you, you and those in attendance to know that I wish I was there. Tonight, the Board of Education takes an important step forward continuing to address the needs of our explosive growth in students. As we all know, in the absence of increased state funding, Olentangy local schools must continue to rely on our taxpayers to support the district. I consider myself a grateful citizen of the district as well as a thankful one for the ongoing support of our residents. This levy is a strategic look into the longer term future of the district and the future continues to be bright. In closing. Let me say why I'm not there to vote in person on this issue. I support it fully. This effort will allow our students to continue to flourish and reap the benefits of some of the best educational and co-curricular opportunities in the state. My best to the board 
in the attendings tonight. Kindest regards, Roger Bartz. All right. So with that um, read into the record, let's transition to the uh, operating ask. Mr. Ray from Hatfield, do you have a recommendation? I would think that, um, well, we know from prior conversations that the 5.9 mils that we talked about um, previously is not sufficient. Um, we know the 9.5 mils is definitely um, off the table as more than what we would need currently. When we think about where um, we would like to recommend and, and be able to continue our operating practices, um, continuing where we have now would be roughly um, a 7.5 mil ask, or 7.5. And then if we want to take a look at, um, you know, thinking about additional um, programmatic changes would be closer to a 7.9 range. So within that range, we are looking to have a conversation with the board to understand what your thoughts are with that. Um, just for dollars, so that people understand the dollar value that we're talking about, mm -hmm. um, a 7.9 mil levy would be an additional $276.50 per 100,000. So if your home is $100,000, which not many of them are, I think the average sale price is $358,000, but you, we can do the math. Um, a 7.9 is $276.50 additional a year. Um, I looked at a, okay, I did do 358. <laughs> Three, so if you did a 358 total, if with a 0.5 PI and a 7.9 for operating on a $358,000 home, it's $1,053 of additional tax dollars. If you did a 7.9 and a 0.5 for the PI. So then I looked at going 7.4 and a 0.5. And you've got, so then that would be a total of 70, uh, of 7.9 mils that you're asking for. And on a, the average sale price of a home at 358, that's $990 per year. That feels a little bit better. It's a difference of like $63. So that's what we're talking here. Oh, and to be clear, when we're looking at levies, we're, uh, we're forecasting into the future what our cash balance should be. Right. And so, I mean, we like to, we have an unofficial policy of having two months of expenditures in the bank. Um, I've also attended OSBA leadership conferences where they also recommend that two months is the, the amount that you hold um, when schools get really low, they're at risk of state takeovers and so we want to stay we're in that category we want to stay away from that so every time we look at these um, different mill rates we're looking at how many days cash we would have on hand and I know the number looks big but when you're talking about you know we spend over 13 what is it now 13 million dollars a month 13 yeah that's just more than that mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Well, if you're gonna, if you, if you want to talk days, a 7.4 mil operating levy gives you 51 days of cash on hand, mm -hmm. um, and a 7.9 gives you 60 days. So it's a difference of nine days. I think that is workable if you went with a 7.4. And a 7.5 is 53 days. Right. Again, assuming the forecast of the next five years comes in oh. exactly as we assume. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Which we know is not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and I, I think we've been fortunate in managing, to that, managing the, the numbers. Typically gets better. Typically does get better because mm -hmm. we continue to keep, to keep expenses and revenue continues to be um, positive. 
our variance, big, the biggest variance we get is from health care costs, which is because of changes we've made to um, that program. Thankfully, all of our associations came on board with all of those changes. It's helped us manage all those costs moving forward. Um, you know, I think it's a delicate balance of asking for what we need to continue the excellent programs we have. Um, and I, I don't know that the 7-9 necessarily adds pro dramatic programmatic improvements across, you know, mm -hmm. to what we're doing because, because again, we're always managing for the next levy also. Right. So I would say historically, um, we've asked for too little for, for, in some regards. We've always managed to it, made it work, but um, that, you know, again, the no state funding and the continued growth um, continues to be our two greatest challenges. We'll make whatever number we get work. We'll make it work and, um, you know, does, does a little additional millage give us more flexibility? Potentially, sure. Does it, but could it potentially make us stretch a three, you know, we, I, I don't know that we'd ever want to say a more than a three-year promise given the current state of state funding and what we continue to see from an enrollment growth. So 7.4, absolutely, three-year promise. 7.9, you start talking about being able to stretch further and further and further, you know, who knows? Um, but it is a balance. We want to make sure we're asking for what we absolutely need and, and again, being respectful and mindful of our community, what they're, what we know they'll support. Every time I meet with the staff, I tell them, I, we want all the same things you guys want. We want you to have the smallest class size as possible. With everything, everything we have in Olentangy is valuable to somebody, otherwise we wouldn't be doing it. Every program we have is valuable. People ask, what more could we have? I don't know what more <laughs> we could have. I really don't, because I think our overall program is so outstanding. Um, there are always some things somebody wants, but I'm not sure there's anything else we absolutely need. But everything we have is valuable to somebody. Um, so, you know, but I tell the staff all the time, we have to have a number on there that we know will pass. Not a number we hope will pass. And I think when you start talking about over eight mils, or even at eight mils, it starts to get you into a, into a range of, oof. And hope's not a strategy when it comes to passing a levy. Mm -hmm. Well, we do know that it's a, almost two mils just for growth per year is what we would need because of lack of funding and lack, what's the term here? They just, we're not funded for our current enrollment. We're funded for no, we're, Yeah, we're, we're not funded. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's the additional okay. growth funding that they gave us doesn't keep up with what we have right in addition to what we've experienced in the past so you know we are a locally funded district we do have to continue to talk to our community about um, coming back from another ballot item for more tax dollars it's it's unfortunate but that's just the reality of how ONTNG is funded um, if we are talking about being able to, you know, as we look at maintaining the programs that we have and being able to um, continue a three-year planned cycle for levies, I think that 7.4 mils makes sense. Um, that seems to be, if I'm hearing the conversation in the direction, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that that's a, a millage rate that we are comfortable with and feel that our community could support in addition to that half mil of permanent improvement, which would have a total uh, tax package then of 7.9 mils. I agree. I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I'd rather have been four years than three. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, yes, but um, I, I have to be cognizant of what our, our of our taxpayers as well. It, it, you strike a, it, it's a delicate balance that we have to strike here yeah. um, because we don't have a crystal ball that's going to tell us what's going to happen in, in three years. <laughs> I, I don't know that a 7-9 would get us four years. 
I don't think it will. You don't think it will? Well, <laughs> looking at the numbers that I'm looking at now. I think 7 4 will get us four years. We do. If we work at it, yeah. What's the cash balance with 7 4 and 7 5? Seven, give, eight, give me the year. 7 4 is 51. 51 seven. days on 7.4. Seven 5 is 53. Okay. So it, it's two days. Yeah, I don't know that that's, that's a big that's decision no. maker. I think the no. decision no, is 7.4 or 7.9. 7 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I, I, again, I stated at the last meeting, you know, when I'm at Macy's and I look at a shirt, it's $20 and the other one is $19.99. I'm going for the $19.99. It's just perception. If you're looking at the, if we go 7.9 plus a 0.5, you're at 8.4 mils and your average homeowner now is going to be paying an additional $1,053. Whereas if you go with the 7.4 and the 0.5, you're at 990, an additional 990. Again, $63 difference, but it's all in the perception of things. I mean, we have to be cognizant of that. Um, not every taxpayer in the district has, has kids. So we have to understand that. All right, so do we have any more discussion on that? Are we going to move to the action items? Yes. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's take, uh, let's present the board action items. I'll present the board action items. I'm going to do it in two pieces, mm -hmm. actually. Yes, um, I'm going to present actually three pieces. Board action item A. So to, pr uh, to approve the operating mills and permit improvement mills to be entered into the following resolution, I recommend that those mill amounts be 7.4 for operating and 0 0.5 for permanent improvement. So I'll make that motion. So moved. A second. Okay, any discussion? I just want to point out to people again, it's not what else can we get. It's preserving the current programming that we have. Because there is no cut list. Right. If it if it fails, as Mr. Rave said at our last meeting, then you start looking at everything that is not mandated by the state. I always tell people I cannot cut English. It's mandated by the state. But anything else that's not mandated by the state. We just looked at new graduation requirements. Anything else that's not required by the state becomes something that becomes in jeopardy. And that also includes class sizes. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Yeah. Ms. Hatfield, please call the roll. Mrs. Fiesel. Yes. Ms. Mrs. Patrick. Yes. Mr. King. Yes. And Mr. O'Brien. Yes. Thank you. All right, I'll present board and action item B. That's to approve a resolution declaring the uh, necessity of a bond issue in levies of a tax in excess of 10 uh, mil limitation. And to submit the question of such issue to the electors and requesting state consent special needs designation in connection therewith. Yeah. We're a special needs yeah. <laughs> district. Yes. Because well, of our. Sorry, let's yeah. Motion second. Oh, motion. Okay, discussion. doing discussion. I'm, I, yes. I move to. Your motion. I motion. Second. I'll second. I'll explain what Discussion. the explain what the need of our special district need is. So because we have more than um, nine percent of our revenue in debt, we can we are considered a special needs, and so with that we have to ask for special consent to um, have a bond package. Um, the valuation within the district, because it is high, allows us to do so and to move forward with that calculation to show that we can, in fact, pay that debt payment. Um, so the resolution is combining um, the uh, necessity of the bond issue and also the requesting the state consents um, to make sure that we can get all of the paperwork filed that we need to to be in compliance for that um, bond sale. Any other discussion? 
we've done this before. So yes, we've done this before. Time, this is the, the same. Yeah. Yeah. This is the yeah. same um, nuance that was taken care of in the 2016 mm -hmm. um, package as well. Um, it has nothing to do with the no new millage. It just has to do with the size of the district and the continuation that we have to build facilities due to growth. Mm -hmm. All right, please call the roll. Mrs. Fiesel. Yes. Mr. King. Yes. Mrs. Patrick. Yes. And Mr. O'Brien. Yes. Thank you. All right, I'll now present board action item C to approve a memorandum of understanding to amend Article 27, Section 27. 1B HSA funding with the Ohio Association of Public School Employees, the OAPSE AF AFSCME <laughs> Local 4 AFL CIO, and this local number 322. I'll move. To I'll accept. second. And then Emily, if you could be so kind to give a brief Absolutely. Uh, overview of what the uh, memorandum is. Yeah. Sure. So when we negotiated the contract with our, this is um, our bus driver association now just to clarify that's a long name for mm -hmm. the OPSI 322 um, but it relates to our bus drivers um, but when we negotiated the contract for th with the HSA uh, funding in the benefits package what we have found is that there is a special rule from the IRS that um, disqualifies anyone enrolled in Medicare to contribute into an HSA account so if they've had one previously open, they can continue to use those funds, but they can no longer participate in contributions um, to fund that and keep that account going. So we worked with our um, membership and with our president, Mr. Vangeloff is, is with us in support, um, to come up with an alternative for those folks that might be um, of age 65 and enrolled in Medicare. And so this speaks to those individuals. Um, the MOU mirrors where we are with our HSA contributions in terms of how they are qualified, um, whether or not the member's spouse is available or um, a part of the union or not a part of the union and all of those nuances pretty much mirror the HSA funding. It's just giving them another tool that they can use that meets IRS regulations if they are in that Medicare eligibility and enrollment. So we felt it was a fair use um, of the self-insured funds to offer another alternative to those folks in that situation. Okay. Any other that questions? Mm -hmm. Any questions on that? All right. So please call the roll, please. Mr. King? Yes. Mrs. Patrick? Yes. Mrs. Fiesel? Yes. And Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Great. Thank you. So now, uh, Ms. Hapgood, you please present the treasurer action item. Yes, please. I would like to present Treasurer Action Items A and B for approval, please. So moved. Second, please. I'll second. Any mm -hmm. discussion? Mm -hmm. All right, please call the roll. Mrs. Fiesel. Yes. Mr. King. Yes. Mrs. Patrick. Yes. And Mr. O'Brien. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Rafe, would you please present the Superintendent Action Items? Yes, I'm going to start with uh, Superintendent Action Item B5, which is for um, the approval of People Activity Supervisor uh, Employment for 2019-10 for John C. Diesel, High School, uh, High School Winter Season Boys Head Basketball Coach. So I'll start with that one. I'll move to accept. I'll second. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. King. Yes. Mr. O'Brien. Yes. Mrs. Fiesel. Abstain. Thank you. And Mrs. Patrick. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And then I will present the remaining superintendent action items A, B, 1 through 4, and C through E for approval. So moved. I'll second. Any discussion? Roll. Mrs. Fiesel. Yes. Mrs. Patrick. Yes. Mr. King. Yes. And Mr. O'Brien. Yes. Thank you. I'll now entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Our next meeting is the 20th. Yeah. Is that right? I lost 20th track. of November. Yeah. November 20th? It's an odd Here? day. Here? Yeah. Um, unfortunately, that's, they're having a basketball fundraiser that night that Mr. Reef and I will have to miss. 
Oh, yarn. What is that? <laughs> They're raising money for Mr. Chirpus and Dylan. Oh. Mm -hmm. The Bears are playing the Braves. Oh, wow. That is that men and women. The men and women's team. Please call the roll, Ms. Hampton. Mrs. Patrick. Yes. Mrs. Fiesel. Yes. Mr. King. Yes. And Mr. O'Brien. Yes. Thank you. All right, thank you, everybody.